Hello everyone, this is Gary D. Tonincourt from morethanasnapshot.com. Today I'm coming to you with part two of how to make a slideshow in Adobe Photoshop CC. So uh, a couple of enhancements we could make uh, in addition to what we did in part one would be to add some video to mix in with our um, still images. So I've already added one video here, a time lapse. So here I'll play a short section of this video so you can see how that blends in. Okay, here's the time lapse. It was it was quick. And again, this video is not rendered, so it's not going to look as smooth as the finished product. But that's what we're looking to do. So somewhere down here, I'm going to add in another video to show you how I did it. So right at the end of the video group one timeline, there's a little plus. I'm just going to click that to open up my file structure. And um, I need to then navigate to the folder that has the video that I want. And I believe it's going to be this video. So I'm going to click on the video and open it. And you can see that it added the video as a layer, just like the other pictures but now I need to put it in the right spot. So I want this to be right over here. I'm just going to click and drag it and drop it there. And it's a very short time lapse, so that's about as big as that one is going to be. See if I can zoom in and get it a little larger. And let's see if we can play that. All right, yeah, so that quick little time lapse can go right in there. So it's very simple to add a little video clip of anything. And once you've added the video clip, of course, you can click and drag and resize it and make the video clip as short or as long as you want it to be. Of course, it can't be longer than it actually is. And again, you have options where you could um, change the duration or speed of the video right there. You also can click this little arrow and you have options for doing keyframes for precision, uh, opacity, style, and uh, yeah, just those three things. But I'm not going to do any keyframing on that. And again, you could add transitions. So I'll put in a crossfade, maybe a fade to black. Alright, let's play that. Okay. Now, the other thing we can do is add text. So I'll show you what I did at the beginning of the show. All right, if I turn on the text layer, I added some text here. You can see Adirondack Mountains is scrolling up, and then it goes on to the next slide. Okay, now I'll show you how to do that. I'll simply turn off this text layer for a minute, and I'll bring my playhead back to the beginning. So it's just like working with text in Photoshop. Um, the first thing I need to do is make sure I'm not in video group one. I'm going to need to put a text layer that is above video group one. I think if I just click on video group one to uh, get myself sort of out of the folder and then click on the text tool, which is this T right over here, click on that and then draw a, a big horizontal box. Now here I can select the color. In this case, I'm going to select orange and I want my text to be centered. And I'll make the box a little wider. And then 100 points is what I used for the size. So I'll just type in. Okay, so I added in the text and now I'll just use the little uh, arrow tool to make sure that the text is centered. Okay, here you can see the text layer ended up inside a video group one, so it's not going to show up on my picture. So I have to drag the text layer above video group one and then let go. And then you can see that it made a new layer here called Adirondack Mountains 2017, but you don't see the text layer because it put the text layer all the way at the end of the video. We don't want it there, so we have to drag it all the way back to the beginning and put it over the first picture where I want it to show up. All right, so I'll just align it with the first picture, and it's the same length as the first picture. Now I can also animate this text. 
So if I click on no motion and change it to pan, and I want it to scroll up, so I think it's got to go up 90 degrees. Okay, now I can set uh, keyframes so I can pick a starting position and an ending position. So to do that, I click this little arrow, and you can see right here there's already two keyframes set. So this little diamond and this little diamond, this is going to be the start point and this is going to be the end point. So right now, if I were to play it, it's going to start from there and scroll up which is okay, but it's not really the effect that I was looking for. So I'm going to come back to the beginning. I'm going to click on this first diamond to activate that keyframe. And then I'm going to use my move tool and drag this down out of view, but still centered. So now it's going to start from out of view. And then when we play it, it's going to scroll upward. All right, and then the uh, the last keyframe, I want it to stop. I don't want it to just scroll off the page. So I'm going to drag that in a bit because I want it to be there for a little while. I'll just put the playhead right on that keyframe, click on that keyframe, and then click and drag right where I want it to be in its final position. Okay, let's say there. So now when I play it, it will start at the bottom and come up to that stop position and then it'll go on with the rest of the show. Okay, if I want to get a little more advanced, I can work with the text layer and add special effects to the text. So I'll bring the text up so we can see what we're doing here. And come down to the FX menu and let's say I want to add a satin effect. All right, so when you click on the satin effect, it brings up these tools. It's going to multiply, which sort of gives it this little burnt, burnt in look. And I could change the angle of the, the effect and the contour and all that kind of stuff. But I'm just going to leave it that way for now. But I'm going to add also a drop shadow. I'm going to click Drop Shadow and then click on Drop Shadow to look at its preferences. And if I want the distance to be a little bit larger, there you can see there's a Drop Shadow and the spread. Make that a little softer. The size, I like it a little bit hard. Okay, just soften that just a little bit. Okay, and then I'll say OK. So now, when we play this, you can see that enhanced text is coming up, and then it stops, and then it goes on to the next slide. And then eventually it'll hit the time-lapse video that I entered in the first position. Here's the video. And then it'll go back to the still images. So that's how you can really enhance your uh, slideshows by using mixed media uh, text and video besides the still images now when you're all done and you think you have your show just the way you want it you have to export it as a video so I'm gonna bring the playhead back to the beginning and how you can export your video is by clicking on this little hamburger menu on the right side and then you're going to click on uh, render video then you're going to give it a name like add around next slideshow and you're going to pick a folder where you want it to go um, you want it to be uh, h264 which is a common video codec and uh, hdtv 1080p uh, so it'll play well on um, youtube or on a tv and uh, 30 frames per second is fine and that's it I don't really need to change any of these settings I'm just gonna export it as a standard HDTV video and then you click render and it'll turn that timeline into a fully rendered video which you can do anything you want with such as uh, uploading it to YouTube give that a try and uh, Post in the comments the link to the slideshow you made. I'd like to see all of them. 
and I hope that this helps you to get a little more creative with your photos and videos. So again, this has been Gary D. Tonincourt from more than a snapshot.com.